that is Tesla's Cybercab, otherwise known as the Robot Taxi. It's the long-awaited self-driving taxi that Tesla has just revealed. Here are the highlights. It costs 30k and will be coming as soon as 2026. Anyone can own one. It's got no pedals and it's got no steering wheel. The car is completely autonomous. In this video, I'm taking a deep dive into exactly what the Tesla Cybercab is and what you can expect from it. If you like this video, don't forget to like this and subscribe to the channel for more. The Cybercab, as you might have guessed from the name, is inspired by the look of the Tesla Cybertruck. It's got one big light bar at the front, a little bit like this t-shirt, rather than traditional headlights, and it's got a similar one at the rear. This design is becoming somewhat signature for Tesla, so it's instantly recognisable. While the Robo Taxi maintains an angular design like the Cybertruck, it's slightly more traditional looking, so a little bit like the Model 3. My favourite feature has got to be the wing doors, just like the Model X or the DeLorean, or other sports cars like that. Russ Hanneman would be proud. The best part? The doors are completely automatic. You can open them using the touchscreen panel inside the Cybercab and probably from the app. Taking a look inside the Cybercab, it's really obvious that there isn't any steering wheel. Instead, there's just a large touchscreen panel in the front. The Cybercab's been built from the ground up for unsupervised self-driving. What this means is you're not going to need to pay attention. And, unlike Waymo's Robo Taxis, which I actually checked out a few weeks ago and you can watch here, they don't adapt an existing vehicle for self-driving. For example, in a Waymo, you can see that the seatbelt is buckled for over the driver's seat and you can watch the wheel spinning. There are also a ton of different sensors outside of the car. Cybercab has none of them. It's based solely on Tesla Vision, which is the fancy name for the cameras that enable self-driving on the existing Tesla fleet and the AI computing. Similarly to the Waymo experience, you're going to book your taxi ride through the Tesla app. Just like any ride hailing service, you'll get a countdown on your phone for when the car's going to arrive. When it pulls up to your location, you're going to be able to unlock the doors and just get in. You'll see a personal greeting on the screen and a reminder to buckle up, and then you can begin your journey to your destination. Alternatively, once you get inside the Cybercab, you'll be able to select a destination on the screen. While you're taking your ride, you've got a few different options of what you can do. For example, you could use Tesla's existing entertainment suite to watch media or play games during your journey. Alternatively, you could follow your ride along using the screen. It'll show you the route you've taken and where you're going with the familiar blue line. There's also plenty more you can do. Tesla's promo material shows you that you can have deep conversations with people, read a newspaper, draw sketches on your iPad, or even fall asleep. As I said, since the self-driving is completely unsupervised, you don't need to pay attention at all. Looking back at the inside of the Cybercab, you'll see that there are only two seats instead of four. They look a little bit more like sun lounges than traditional car seats, presumably designed with comfort in mind. I'm a little bit confused as to why there are only two seats instead of four, but I'm guessing this is to make the production of the car easier or to allow more room for the trunk, etc. Speaking of, the boot, or trunk as the Americans like to say, is extremely spacious, so you can load it up with groceries, luggage, or just about anything else you can think of. Arguably one of the biggest changes from Tesla's existing cars is the removal of the charging port. Instead, it's going to use inductive charging to recharge the battery. This is just like putting your phone on a wireless charger, for example. You're going to get slightly slower charging speeds, but it means you can just pull up to a pad and start charging. These chargers aren't actually in production yet, but they will be ready in time for the Cybercab. Tesla also showed off some specially designed robots that can clean the Cybercab. These might be rolling out to supercharging stations in the future, or even hubs designed for the robo taxis, but it's not entirely clear yet. Of course, you can always just clean your, the vehicle yourself, or you can ask the Optimus robot to do so when it comes out. So, how much does it all cost? Elon said that the Cybercab is going to start at under 30k. It's a bold promise, but I think it could be deliverable. There are physically fewer components inside a similar chassis to the Model 3, so in theory it should actually be cheaper to build. Plus, unlike the Cybertruck, the Cybercab isn't made from stainless steel, so the panels are going to be easier to create. That said, the Cybertruck was supposed to start at 40k, but actually arrived for over 70k. Even if that sort of thing happens with the Cybercab, it's still going to be cheaper than a Waymo. To get a Waymo fully kitted out and on the road, the cost is at around 200 grand, more than double that of a Cybercab. But who's even going to get a Cybercab? Well, the answer to that is anyone. You or I could go out and buy one and run it as a taxi to earn extra income, returning it home each night to clean and charge. Or, larger cab companies could buy a fleet and run them as their own cabs in an area. The possibilities are kind of endless and it's really exciting. This is definitely a glimpse into the future. Having actually been inside a Waymo, I'm confident self-driving taxis are the way forward. But let's address the elephant in the room. As long as you're in a sported area, you can actually call a Waymo right now. Tesla's Cybercab won't be coming until 2026 at the earliest, perhaps even 2027. I don't actually see that as a problem though, especially as Tesla's self-driving is going to improve during that time. The way to think of this is that Waymo and Tesla are going to exist as competitors together, but coexist. 
similar to existing taxi firms. You've got plenty of different taxi firms in one area. You don't only need to have one. One doesn't be the other. You've got Uber, you've got Lyft, you've got Bolt. These services can coexist, and I think that's going to be what happens between Tesla and Waymo. What if you don't want to shell out 30 grand for a new cybercab? There's some good news there too. The same unsupervised full self-driving will be coming to existing Model 3s, Model Ys, and even Cybertrucks next year, and you're going to be able to operate them as robo-taxis. Tesla actually showed this off at the event. Tesla's been promising this level of autonomous driving since its first launch. Timescales have rather dramatically slipped in the past, but given the current regular releases for full self-driving, I wouldn't be shocked to see this timeline met this time around. California and Texas have already pre-approved Cybercab and the use of other Tesla vehicles for robo-taxi use, and I'm sure it won't be long before others follow suit. And there was one last thing from Tesla at this event, the Robovan. It's a larger minivan-esque vehicle that can seat 20 people or actually be used for cargo. This one is just filled with seats and space, and it offers the same self-driving experience. Tesla didn't want to give away too many details about this vehicle, but they did say it is coming. It's hard not to feel excited about this look at the future. There's a lot we do know about Cybercab, even if a couple of logistical questions remained unanswered. Although, as you'd expect, reactions online have been mixed. A lot of them have been clouded by people's dislike towards Elon and Tesla. Whether you love them or hate them, the reason we're all here, the reason we all actually like tech, is because it pushes boundaries. It wants to change things, change the world. It's exciting. And that's exactly what Cybercab is and what it's doing. It feels like sci-fi. Thanks for sticking around and I hope that you're excited as I am. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about Cybercab and I'll see you in the next one.